What is it about these solos that makes them so goddamn tasty? Obviously, there's a number of reasons, but for me, by far the most obvious is just how freaking well the guitarists of these solos follow the underlying chords to add an extra layer of depth and harmonic richness. Now, that's not to say it's essential for all solos to do this, because obviously there are many examples of amazing legendary solos that are a lot more like monotone and less harmonically adventurous in nature, but still fucking amazing. But for players like me, and I'm assuming you as well, nothing quite hits the spot like a guitarist who really knows how to follow the chords well. Oh. In case you're not entirely sure what I mean by follow the chords, let me explain. So when you're playing a solo in a song, no matter what it is, there's gonna always be a chord progression underneath it. Sometimes it's very obvious what the chord progression is, as the chords are being clearly outlined, such as Tornado of Souls, for example. But other times it can be quite unclear, like when you're playing over some furiously dissonant riffing, such as Angel of Death by Slayer, for example. But regardless, you can always boil the accompaniment down to some semblance of a chord progression to follow. But before we go any further, let me give you a super fast refresher on what exactly chords are. At the most fundamental level, a chord is a group of three notes derived from a particular scale. These notes are typically the root, third, and fifth degree of a scale. For example, a C major chord comprises the root, third, and fifth degrees of the C major scale. C, E, and G. And an E minor chord comprises the root, third, and fifth degrees of the E minor scale, E, G, and B. There are all different kinds of chords, such as diminished, augmented, suspended, dominant seventh, but the vast majority of chords are simply just slight modifications or embellishments on good old regular, major, and minor chords. So, when it comes to soloing, most guitarists will simply just identify the key of whatever it is they're playing in, and then get to work on creating some licks and phrases in that key without really giving thought to much else. Now, this is absolutely fine and there's really nothing wrong with this approach, but if you really want to create something super tasty that will induce the maximum amount of gurnage from your listeners, then it's super, super important that you're aware of what exactly the chords are that you're playing over. This is because certain notes sound super effective over certain chords, and it's really quite essential that you're aware of this and how and why this is the case. So just to be 100% sure that you know exactly what I mean by following the chords, then let me show you some examples. I'm about to play you two solos. The first one will not follow the chords and the second one will follow the chords. So have a listen and notice just how much more depth the second solo has compared to the first one. <laughs> So, as you can hopefully hear, while the first solo still sounded pretty cool, the second one just really has the edge to it. But how exactly does one achieve this particularly tasty sound? Bloody great question! So, this is going to sound really dumb and uh, probably a bit patronizing, but I really don't mean for it to come across like that. But all you need to do to follow the chords when soloing is literally just highlight the notes of the chord you're playing over, or the chord tones as they're called. These are simply just those root, third and fifth notes that I was talking about earlier. But I know it's one thing to talk about an idea and another thing to put it into practice. So right now I'm gonna take you through five very simple steps that you can implement right away to vastly increase the tastiness of your solos. Step one, identify the chords you're playing over. So obviously before we do anything else, we have to know what exactly the chords are that we're dealing with. In this case, I've prepared a backing track which simply alternates between the chords A minor, and F minor. Step two, 
Identify where the basic bar chord shapes are of these chords on the neck over one octave. In this case, I know that we have an A minor here and here and an F minor here and here. Step three, pick one example of each of these chords, ideally in close proximity to each other to minimize jumping around. In this example, I'm gonna start with this A minor and this F minor. These are gonna be the notes that we start to improvise with. Step four, now it's time to play a solo, but only using the notes of the two chords you picked. For example, when the A minor is playing, only use the notes of the A minor chord you picked. And when the F minor is playing, only use the notes of the F minor chord you picked. So start looping the chord progression and get soloing, but be sure to keep your playing painfully slow and simple, as the main goal here is to really listen to how each note sounds over each chord. Step five, once you're comfortable with those two chord shapes, we're gonna open things up and also include the other two chord shapes from step two. So now, when we improvise our simple solo, we're gonna be making use of all four chord shapes. So when A minor is playing, we can now use the notes of both this A minor chord and this A minor chord. And conversely, when F minor is playing, we can now use the notes of both this F minor chord and this F minor chord. So get the chord progression looping again and get playing. If you're feeling adventurous, you can also start playing around with adding some extra notes in besides just the chord tones, but only do this when you're super comfortable with the exercise. So these five steps are an incredibly effective and very straightforward way to start getting used to following chord movements in your soloing because it uses knowledge and muscle memory that you very likely already have. And you can use what you've learned in this exercise in conjunction with your regular soloing strategies to really, really widen your musical vocabulary. As the whole philosophy of this way of playing is to get you out of that typical you know, guitarist mentality of following your regular sort of like, you know, strict scale boxes. And instead to get you thinking more chordally and in terms of arpeggios and of overall harmony, which will not only make you a much more accomplished lead guitar player, but also just like really hone your ears and your overall sense of music and just make you a much better musician in general. For example, if you're soloing in say E minor, then I want you to stop thinking about like, you know, this as like the be all end all, like this is home and like that's it, everything else has to revolve around that. I want you to start thinking about the idea of like home to be a sort of like continually shifting place on the neck, depending on what chord it is you're playing over. For example, let's say you're soloing over some basic E minor riff like this. So you can start off just by using like your regular E minor pentatonic box, right?
But then you notice, okay, the next chord coming up is a B. So we think to ourselves, okay, instead of just like sticking to what we usually do and like staying in our safe zone of our E minor pentatonic box, we're gonna shift our home point now to a B minor chord shape somewhere. So let's say in this case you wanna, I don't know, not go too far. Let's say we will use this B minor here. So we know we have a B minor chord shape here, right? At the uh, 14th fret on the A string. So now this is an our bass, this is our bass. Our uh, B minor chord tones, as well as any other notes around it that we want to use. All right, so this is our new home when we land on the B. So let's imagine we're playing over the song, it's solo time, we're starting in E minor, let's go. Now the B comes. Now back to E. B. So that's a very basic demonstration of the kind of like, you know, fundamental philosophy that this style of playing goes for, where we're continually switching around our home base depending on which chord we're playing over. I do hope you guys enjoyed this introductory lesson on how to solo effectively over chord changes. Everything I've covered in this here lesson is literally just scratching the surface on how to become a chord following solo master. In the follow up lesson, I'm going to be covering some much more advanced concepts and detailing how you can use them to really open the neck like wide up and to create the tastiest licks that you possibly can. So what I want you guys to do is to use the two backing tracks I provided and run through the five steps detailed in this video for both backing tracks. Keep them looping over and over and just keep playing and playing and playing over them. I want you to get really comfortable with shifting between these basic chord shapes and creating melodies that seamlessly flow between them. For more lessons and exercises like this one, as well as other perks such as Discord access and weekly mentoring from me, then please do check out Bradley Hall's Guitar School at patreon.com slash Bradley Hall Guitar. Cheers guys, happy shredding, and I'll see you very soon.